after construction on his pet project increased dramatically in the final months of 2020. One of Donald Trump's final acts as president was to visit his big, beautiful wall. On day one of his presidency, Joe Biden paused construction. Now, he'll have to decide how to deal with the wall's lasting damage on local populations, nature, and animal species, especially along the Arizona and Sonora border. The Tohono Autumn Nation is one of the few parts of that region that was able to resist Trump's attempts at border wall construction. There was a fear because, as it's been in previous, that the government has taunted and threatened in the name of national security. Kendall Jose is the vice chairman of the Chukotkuk district that controls the majority of the border territory within the nation. It helped make sure the government honored longstanding agreements not to build within the territory without consent. The people, the districts, the tribes that know you are going to adhere to those and continue to follow those practices, again, especially here on the nation. It, it's sad that we couldn't do that outside in other areas that you hear today, such as the Oregon Pipe, which is Aboriginal homeland to the autumn. It's not in control by the nation, but, but it's still our home. Construction outside of the Tohono Autumn Nation's limits affected a number of their traditional homelands and sacred sites. Wildlife also took a big hit. We got to allow nature to take its course, the animals to be able to cross back and forth, water to flow. Those were some of the points in negotiating this. Um, as you can see, it's, it's still the barbed wire fence, but just reinforced with these steel bollards. Well, that's kind of the opposite of what's been happening on other parts of the border here, is the, the new construction of the border wall is not leaving any space for, for animals, for wildlife to, to pass. That's true. And that's true and very disheartening. Concern about the wall's ecological impact extends to both sides of the border. Construction in the southeast corner of Arizona has cut through a biodiverse area known as the Sky Islands, as well as through a number of ecological conservation ranches. Jose Manuel Perez Cantu works for Cuenca Los Ojos, a Mexican and American organization which owns some of the ranches. Estamos viendo este muro horrible, este que está cortando todas esas eh, riquezas biológicas. El, el, la migración de fauna está comprobado que por aquí pasaba y es uno de los principales corredores de fauna, principalmente de jaguar y de oso negro. Se va a ver drásticamente afectada por la construcción de este muro. Conservationists like Perez Cantu were disappointed the Mexican government did little to push back on the wall's construction. Eh, yo quería preguntarle a unos días de su encuentro con el presidente de Estados Unidos, Trump volvió ayer a tomar el muro como tema de su campaña electoral y quería saber qué opina de esto. Pues no tengo este opinión porque es un tema que no se habló, no está en la agenda nuestra. Pero la política de, del gobierno de México es eh, a la no intervención. Entonces, este, no hubo, no hubo ningún, ninguna queja ni ninguna intervención por parte del gobierno de México hacia el gobierno de Estados Unidos. Esperamos que con la nueva administración del lado americano eh, haya eh, más apertura en el muro Perez Cantu has already noticed the effect the wall has had on animal populations, as most flock to the wall's only remaining unsealed floodgates. Sendero, donde pasaba la fauna. Esa última puerta donde están trabajando ahorita fue de las últimas que cerraron. Y después de la lluvia, puedes ver como la fauna la encontró y la fauna usaba este, este pasillito para, para correr. Y ya no pueden. Ya no pueden, ya está cerrado. No le han puesto el candado. Ellos no te dan un, una opción para, para que puedan abrirlo para la fauna algunas veces cada año o algo? Ahorita no. La, la instrucción ahorita del gobierno americano es que quede cerrada. Está muy claro que es fauna, que no está pasando gente, que no estaba, estaba usando, usada por, por fauna. Este, queremos ver con la nueva administración que entiendan la importancia de tener estos corredores biológicos abiertos y la posibilidad que existiera de tener monitoreado con cámaras o de alguna forma allá y que eso permitiera que siga pasando la fauna. Mira, aquí, por ejemplo, el, la diferencia del muro en esta parte en particular 
es de 5 pulgadas. O si sea, algunos animales van a alcanzar a pasar, pero definitivamente ni jabalines, ni osos, ni coyotes, ni animales mayores, pumas, gatos montés, no van a poder pasar por aquí. Qué triste. Mm. Directly on the other side of that portion of the border wall in the United States is the federally owned San Bernardino National Wildlife Refuge. Do you think there's ever going to be any kind of movement here to have a lot of this taken down or to have, you know, why couldn't, why couldn't Biden open up these, these doors? Well, if there's all these gates, um, that'd be a pretty easy, immediate solution. At least, you know, we stop the bleeding and the wildlife can pass back and forth. We turn off the light switch, um, stick a piece of tape over it, do not turn on, and then at least let wildlife flow freely um, until, you know, we come up with some other solution, the, the political will to take these walls down. The election of Joe Biden and his day one pause on construction has given hope to conservationists like Miles Trapagan. Look, look at this. Those are actually welded. I thought I saw them welding on these. So, okay. So how would you even open that exactly. if Exactly. How are they going to do this? They're, they're welded shut. Conservationists are particularly concerned about the potentially long-lasting ramifications on the areas surrounding the completed portions of the wall in Arizona and Sonora. The reason why this place is so biodiverse um, is because we have this, this meeting ground of major elements of Western North America. People sometimes, you know, think that, oh, this is the border. But in fact, this is the heartland of the North American continent because you find, you know, a little bit of everything here. It's the only place where the jaguar and the black bear share the same paths, walk the same canyons. This has been a continental route for uh, migration and dispersal of species. I guess I, I would call it, you know, it's an evolutionary highway. <laughs> Do you ever get lost looking for these cameras? Uh, no. Wildlands Network has been operating a system of infrared cameras to capture the effect of the border wall construction within the wildlife refuge and to compare with other conservation groups like Cuenca Los Ojos working on the Mexican side. There's a hooded skunk on there. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're fairly common. Hey, there's a mountain lion. Wow, very cool. Three pictures of it. Yeah. And then, oh, what the hell is that? That is, that's interesting. That's a bobcat. Okay. So see, it jumped right there. Right. <laughs> look at the, look at the date on that. That's December first. Mm -hmm. That's December third. So. Oh wow! So those are from two different days. Yeah, those are two different days, and once again, north to south movement. Right. Um, so what would the north to south mean? Well, um, we have this border wall about 200 meters downstream here, and um, over the last two months since they've effectively sealed it off. All of the movements of mountain lions have all been coming down the wash, north to south. We haven't had one that's been coming south to north. So they're, they're probably hitting the wall and then they pace back and forth, which is what you'll see animals do in fences. Uh, you'll see this at zoos. So they probably follow it and realize, okay, I can't go up there and I'll head back north and repeat again. What's interesting is that when we were looking at that bobcat picture, you know, I think we both kind of thought, oh, that's the same sequence there. But then I thought, wait a minute, these are three bursts. We've got December 1st, then we have December 3rd. Same scenario. And what I think is probably the same cat. The impact on wildlife of border wall construction in both the east and west of Arizona has caused more and more confused animals to change their migration patterns towards the middle of the state. Paolo Quadri Barba works for the binational organization Sky Island Alliance, running a similar camera program in one of the last remaining wallless portions of Arizona's San Rafael Valley. So, so what's the difference between this side and this side? Between these two sides, if you look over there, that's San Rafael Valley. Uh, there's no border wall there. I mean, it's the barbed wire there, the Normandy. Well, but other than that, you know, animals can go back and forth free, like they've been doing it for thousands of years. When we go on this side, you see the border wall there, of that black line. It doesn't look much big, like too big from here. When you get that, if you get down there, you know, no animal can cross that. 
The border wall construction hit Barba particularly close to home as a Mexican citizen who previously worked for Mexico's National Park Service. We're leaving these cars in the planet that will stay there forever, I mean, for a long time. We can't leave just this bottleneck here as the only way for wildlife to move through. I think if we talk about serious restoration, yes, the world needs to be removed. It is pretty sad, but I'm not hopeless though. Like, as I was saying, I think both Mexico and the US, together they've done great things to you know, overcome past mistakes and history. And, uh, and I, I, don't, I don't think this, this will be an exception, but it will take a lot of uh, political will and a lot of uh, people standing on the right side to restore this place. Mm -hmm.